Hello and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we're taking a look at the new How You Bean Seashell Add-On Stamp Set and the Coordinating Dies. This new add-on set works perfectly with the original How You Bean stamp set, where that pile of seashells at the top fits perfectly inside of the jar. So let's take a look at these stamps. First up, we have this pile of shells that fit perfectly inside of that jar. Then we have some individual shells. This one is a moon snail or shark eye shell. Then we have a scallop shell. We have a clam shell. Next up, we have an auger shell, which is this fun spiral shape. And then we have a conch shell. There is also a really fun starfish shape in this set as well. We also have three shells in this set that have some of the details missing from the center so that you can stamp a cute little smiley face. So we have a second scallop shell, a clam shell, and that auger shell. There are three different smiley faces in this set. The one with the little eyelashes, a plain smile, and then one with the mouth open. And these same three styles come in a second size. So we have a larger face and a smaller face so that they fit the shell depending on how big that shell is. There are also stamps so that you can stamp the little cheeks for each of those sizes of faces. So we have the big cheeks, and the small cheeks, and these are fun to stamp in a pink ink. So I have some peachy keen ink here and I'm just stamping some cute little rosy cheeks on each side of that little face. And here is what those smiley faces look like when you stamp them in those shells that have those empty spaces meant for those little faces. Next up, let's take a look at the sentiments in this set. So there is a sentiment that says, time to celebrate. And there is also a large celebrate stamp so you can color in the letters. Then we have, you are very special to me. And I'm so happy I found you. And then finally, I just wanted to say shello. There's also a stamp that says shell yeah and a stamp that says seashells. Both of these will fit perfectly in the label from the original How You Bean stamp set. So I'm going to stamp out that label and show you just how these fit inside that label. Then there are also some very small sentiments in this set that you can stamp around your shells. We have happy day, shello there, and shell yeah. And there's also some tiny ones that say wow, yay, and woo. These are really fun to stamp around the shells like this. Next, I'm going to show you how you stamp out the original How You Bean jar, and then the pile of shells that I stamped first fits perfectly right inside that jar. So you can stamp it inside the jar just like this and color it all as one, or you can color it separately and die cut it out and layer it over the jar. Now the really fun thing about these shells is you could color them in pretty much any color you like. The colors I'm using today for my coloring were inspired by a card by Audrey that I'm recreating for today's video. And so I'm starting out with this little scallop shell with some BVs. I started with the BV04 for my darkest color, blended out with the BV13, and then the BV02 for the lightest. And then finally, I'll go in with the BV08 and add some little dot details. And I really think that this kind of brings the shell to life and gives it some fun texture. Next up, I'm moving on to that moon snail or shark eye shell and I'm using my violets for this one. So another purple shell, but because I use the BVs for the first one, they're not going to look the same. There's some different tones. I started out with the V15, then I colored in with the V12, and then I'll use that V17 as my darkest to add those little dot details. And I will be doing that to every one of the shells that I'm coloring today. 
Now for my scallop shell, I'm starting with that mid-tone and flicking it up from that sort of base of the shell. And then I will blend it out with the lighter color. So for my other ones, I sort of trace the outside edges with the darker and then blend it. And for this one, I am coloring it a little bit different. Then I will go in with the darkest of that shade and add those little detail dots like I did on the other shells. And I'm going back and coloring the shells in the cluster with the same colors that I colored the individual shells. So you see here, I'm just doing the same thing to that scallop shell in the cluster. I'm going back to that moon snail shell and doing the V colors as well. And for these, when it's in the cluster, I am making sure to show some shadow where the shell on top of it kind of overlaps. Now for the auger shell, I am using some E70s. This is kind of a taupey brown. And it's hard to see because there's not much of the auger shell in that cluster. So I am going to show you how I colored it on this full auger shell. So I just traced the edge of each of the little spirals with that E71 blended it out with the E70, and then I'm going in with that E74, which is the darkest, then just adding some small detail dots. Moving on to those clamshells, I have my E30s out. And for this one, I am going to do it a little bit different. I'm adding the darker shade on the outside, pulling towards the center to give it that rounded look. And then I'm going back in and filling in some of the stripes, so I have some kind of variation in the stripe colors. Then I'll add my little dot details just like I've done on all the ones previously. And of course I'm going to come back to the one in the cluster and color this one in the same manner. So starting out with that mid-tone or that darker one, coloring in the outside and pulling it in and then I'm going back in, coloring the stripes and I'll add a little bit of shadow. Now for the starfish, Audrey used this kind of reddish color, which I thought was sort of fun. So I'm using some R14 and I've just traced the outside edge, not too dark because I don't want it to be orange or red. And then I'm blending it out with the R12 with a little bit of R11 right in the center. And you can see it just kind of gives a sort of glowing darker color around the edge. Then I can take that same R14 and add my little detail dots. And then finally for the conch shell, I'm going back to my E70s. I like this color and you don't see too much of it in the auger shell because it is hidden in the back of this pile. So I'm just tracing the edges with the darker color, blending it out with the E70. And actually I'm going to go back to that E44. And that E47 to color in the dark part on the bottom which is kind of the hole that goes back up into the conch shell, and then add some dots. Then I'll take my coordinating dies that I have already snipped apart with my wire snips and hold them in place with some low tack tape and cut out all of my shells. Now I did go back and color some of the ones that I had left blank with a few different colors so you could see that you can get a variety of colors in these shells. So with that green and that teal, I can pull in the other colors that I colored that match Audrey's and you almost get an entire rainbow of shells. Now I'm recreating a card made by Audrey today and I have a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock cut with the largest outside in stitched rectangle. Then I have used the stitched wave border dies to cut the top to create that ocean wave edge. Then I'm going in with some walnut stain distress ink all over the bottom for my sand and I'll add a little bit extra of that same color to the edges to darken it up. For the top and the water I'm using salvage patina and I'm just going over this whole piece with salvage patina adding a little bit more to that top edge. And I'll blend between the two so you get that kind of nice transition between the blue and the brown. I'm using that same salvage patina and I have smushed some onto my craft mat here, added a little bit of water and I'm just picking that up to add some splatters to the background for some texture. And I will repeat that same process with the walnut stain distress ink. So I've just smushed that onto my craft mat, added some water and picked it up and added some brown splatters. 
Now to create the look of sand, I always like to add some white dots as well. So I'm adding some white watercolor paint. And this gives it the nice texture of sand. I've pulled out the Mermaid For You stamp set and I am going to use this little algae or plant with some celery stick ink and some cilantro ink. I'm going to ink up the top half of the algae with the celery stick and the bottom half with the cilantro and make sure those two colors overlap and just stamp those out. I'll do this three times so that I have three pieces of algae for my cute little scene. Then I can use the coordinating dies to cut them all out. And then for my sentiment, I'm using the sentiment that says, you're very special to me. I've cut a little sentiment banner from white cardstock, and I'm just stamping that to the far right so it can overhang my card and I can trim off the end. I've added some foam tape all over the back of my panel now that it is dry, and I'm just going to pop that on to a card base. So you get this nice border of white with that big white border at the top where that ocean wave is. I do need to add a few little smiles to some of my shells that I colored earlier. I'm adding one to that moon snail shell as well as the starfish. Finally, I'm taking my white gel pen and adding a few little details to the shells to match the look that Audrey had on her card. Now I can start to assemble my card and I'm starting with the pile of shells in the center here. I've popped those up on some foam squares. I'm using thin foam squares for this cluster and then I will add some thicker foam squares to some of the shells in the front. For this little starfish, I'm tucking it behind so I'm just going to glue it directly to that background. For this scallop shell, I'm adding the thicker foam squares, and then I'll add one thin foam square where it overlaps the cluster of shells. For this clam shell, I'm adding that directly to the background as well. And then before it dries, I am going to take this algae and tuck it behind. This one I did need to trim off just a little bit to make it fit down behind that starfish and that clam perfectly. This auger shell sticks out the back here, which I think is really fun, gives it some height. And then I'll add this last piece of algae tucked behind the other auger shell and the starfish on the other side. Then finally, I have this one little moon snail shell, and I'll use some thick foam squares for that because it will be in the foreground here in the front. Then I can add some foam squares to the back of my sentiment banner. I'm only putting it on the right side. And then I'll line this up above, making sure it's straight, and whatever is overhanging the side of the card, I'm just going to take my scissors and trim it off. Finally, I'm adding some clear bubbles and I really think this was a fun look that Audrey had on her card to add these clear bubbles just like we are under the water. These are a great embellishment for this undersea card. And then that is the finished card. Thank you, Audrey, for letting me recreate your card today. Next up, I'm going to be recreating a card that Grace made. I'm starting out with some smooth Bristol cardstock again. For the sand on this card, she used crunchy leaf and pizza crust. Then for the background, she used a combination of peach fuzz and butter, which I think was a really pretty soft pastel. And you can see that I have my jar already colored there and I'm just checking to make sure I pull the pink out enough to where I get a little bit of pink peeking out from behind the jar. Then I'm going in with the butter ink, kind of finishing it off towards the edge.
Then I'm going in with a Copic marker and adding some dots so that my sand has some texture. And you can see I did not ink all the way to the top. She did leave the top white, so it kind of fades up to white and that's where our sentiment is going to go. I'm using two different colors of Copics to add these dots so that I have some variation in the texture that I'm creating. Now to create her sentiment, she used a combination of die cut letters that spell out the word shallow, cut from some pixie dust cardstock, and she ink blended these with walnut ink along the bottom, which you can see I'm doing here. And then this piece is just an eye, which I'm going to trim down and make my little dash mark. And then peacock ink for the top of the letters. So I'm going to make sure that I clean off that walnut ink before I start ink blending the peacock on the other side. So the top of each letter is a blue color and the bottom is that brown color. And I think that these are really pretty, especially ink blended onto that pixie dust glitter cardstock. So I'm trimming the eye down so I get my little dash. I have a piece of terrific teal paper from the Stripes and Sprinkles collection. I've cut that to four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm using the reverse stitch scalloped rectangle window to create a frame for my card. So I'm just lining this up in the center of this rectangle and I'll run this through my die cut machine and I get a perfect frame with the scallops on the inside. Just adding a little bit of liquid glue to this frame and I will just pop that on to my ink blended background. I'm placing my letters across the top. Once I get them spaced to where they all fit nicely, I will just go through and pick each one up add a little bit of liquid glue and put them back into place. I also like that in Grace's design, she did not make these letters perfectly straight across. It adds some whimsy to the card design and a little bit less stress that you don't have to have everything lined up perfectly. Next, I will stamp out the first part of the sentiment that says, just wanted to say. This stamp is from the stamp set and I'm lining it up so just that portion of the sentiment is centered. I'm going to take a little bit of post-it note tape and put it over the word shallow, masking that off so that when I ink the rest of the sentiment, I don't get any ink on that word shallow. Then I can just stamp that right above my die cut letters and complete the sentiment for my card. I did stamp this in some crunchy leaf ink, so it's brown. And then I'm adding my background that I've created with my sentiment to my card base. And now I can start to add my images. Now these images were stamped with some River Rock ink, so they have a slightly softer look to them. I'm adding the lid to my jar, but Grace did something a little different, which I'll show you here in just a little bit. I'm adding some of the shells in the front with some glue right to the background. And then as they layer in front of each other, I'm going to pop them up on some foam squares. So for this clam shell, I popped it up with a thin foam square. And then for this auger shell, I'm going to use a regular thickness foam square. And that will give me two layers of dimension with my shells. And as you can see, I also added some white gel pen details to these shells as well to match Grace's card that she created. Now for this shell, I'm using those thin squares again. And for this conch shell, which is in the front, I'll use the thick, regular thickness square. We also have that cute little crab, which comes from the Life is Good stamp set. And I think he is too adorable with these seashells. He's going to be standing on this shell right here. And then I also have this little speech bubble that I'm stamping the shallow there sentiment from the stamp set with that crunchy leaf ink to match my sentiment. I'm also going to add a little bit of really pale brown Copic marker so that my speech bubble is not too bright white and it matches my background a little bit more. I will also pop this up with a thin foam square and then here is my finished card that I recreated. I love Grace's design and I can't wait to show you hers as well. 
Now let's take a look at some cards by the design team. I love Elena's card and how she incorporated this stamp set with the Mermaid for You mermaids to create a cute little scene. Elisa's card is so much fun where she covered that entire background with shells over that fruit salad plaid. I love Tammy's slimline card where she incorporated the ocean shelfie octopi with those fun shells. And then Callie's card is so cool where she created the edge of the beach where the sand meets the water with that line of shells. Marine Shaker card is so pretty and bright and I love how she showed us again how those mermaids work perfectly with these shells for an underwater scene. Kara's shells are so pretty. She made them so realistic looking using some no line watercoloring techniques and I love that wood background. Megan's card is so pretty. I love how she created this perfect underwater scene by adding some of those cute jellyfish and other underwater creatures. Mindy's card is sweet and simple with a pile of shells framed in that beautiful frame with those beachy background colors. And then I love Lynette's card and those mice are up to some mischief with that jar of shells that they've turned over. Letitia's card is pretty. I love her color scheme and the way she used that hexagon tag to create her background. Here is Audrey's card that inspired the card that I created today. I just love her background and her color she chose. And then here is Grace's card that also inspired the card I made today. I think her cork in the jar is a unique and fun look. And then here's a card that I created a few weeks ago in another video. I just added this to show you another fun way that you can create these shells with white embossing on colored cardstock with a little added detail with ink and color pencil. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye.